Ger, Ger O'Halloran, um, who is currently in the Galway Clinic. So thanks, Ger. Hi, oh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm Ger. I'm, um, I work in the Galway Clinic as a laboratory IT system analyst. Um, and I'm a graduate of uh, medical science. Um, I graduated here in 2013. Um, and I went to America then for a while for the summer, which I'd all definitely recommend. Um, <laughs> after the final exams, you definitely need to get away for a while. I came back then and then I had to get a real job and I got a job in biochemistry in the University of Perth. Hold on to working. And I lasted about four months there before I lost my mind doing the same job. Um, like Debbie was saying, it's very automated, samples on, samples off, uh, all threads, all threads. I couldn't hack it, so I uh, went into Pat, Sean's boss, and I said, Pat, I want to further my career, I want to further my education, but don't let me do a master's in medical science. And uh, we came up with a few ideas, um, and he said, what would you think about IT? And I started to think about it, and I went back, and I realised I spend, some days I spend 90% of my day in the laboratory on a computer, working on a computer system that I know nothing about. Um, so I said, yeah, I want to find out something about this. I started looking up courses, and I came across this health informatics course, a uh, master's in the University of Limerick. Um, I'll, talk, I'll, t I'll talk a bit about health informatics in a minute, but it's basically the application of IT to healthcare. Uh, so any computer systems and stuff like that, and applying it to healthcare. Um, in the meantime, then I decided to go through some more torture by getting a job in the Backrock Clinic up in Dublin. So I was going from Dublin to Limerick to Galway. Um, and I gave Siobhan my job in the fucking rush. <laughs> 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 and um, then what I, what, what I was studying, I, I started the Masters um, and I was working in Black Rock. A job came up in the Galway Clinic, a laboratory IT system analyst position. And I didn't have a clue what a laboratory IT system analyst was, but I said, it sounds like something I do. So I'd, uh, <laughs> I contacted them and I went down for an interview and I managed to go from my way in there and I'm there now still. Um, I graduated from the Masters then a few months later. Um, so health, health informatics, <coughs> what is it? Um, it's basically the application of IT to healthcare. So all your computer systems um, that you see that, that are worked on by healthcare professionals in the hospital um, and all your electronic health records, um, anything IT or that's done on the computer, it basically covers all that. It even covers um, cloud computing and uh, other areas like that, but it's nothing like ones and zeros or anything like that. That's, that's not what I do when you think of IT. You know, some people might think that that's not what I do. Um, it's more of a, a system analyst position where I analyze processes and see how I can apply uh, IT or computer system to help those processes be more efficient, accurate, and retain data better. Um, the master itself was one year long. It consisted of going to college on a Friday and then Saturday, and I was working as well. It's considered a full-time course, but you're really only attend part-time. And uh, it includes modules like project management, health electronic records, climate engineering. Um, it's basically just all IT-related stuff in, in healthcare. Um, so in order to describe what I do, I kind of have to talk about the goal of the clinic and what we do as a whole, as a, as a hospital. Um, the Galway Clinic has been awarded a HIMS Stage 6 standard. HIMS is the Hospital Information Management System Society, and it has standards um, of, uh, that range from Stage 1 to Stage 7, and we're at Stage 6. And we're the first hospital in Ireland and the UK <coughs> to achieve that, and we're still the only hospital in Ireland to have that, uh, that standard. Um, it basically means we're a paper light hospital, and what I mean by that is we record very little data on paper. It's all recorded on our computer system that we have. Um, our computer system is called Meditech. It's just the, the makers, they're a Boston-based company, but it's a hospital-wide information system. It's used in pharmacy, it's used in the lab, it's used in, by doctors, nurses, radiology, all across the board, and everyone puts information onto the system. And by doing that, we're able to produce an electronic health record. An electronic health record is basically um, a, rec a health record uh, for each patient. And it's recorded electronically on the uh, computer system. Um, the big difference between those and the university is uh, where you have a, a paper chart in the university and you have all your stuff written down, you can see them the into the beds and stuff. In the Galway Clinic, we have computers that we are able to bring into each patient and record the data there and it's all on the computer. Uh, so if anyone ever wants to check up something about a patient, uh, you can access all their information from anywhere in the hospital um, just by logging onto the computer, you don't have to go ringing down for a charge or anything like that. Um, the data is all captured in one system. 
Uh, that means it's usable and accessible. So it's us by usable, I mean you can any information that you put into it, you can take it out. You can use that for um, either just finding out uh, trends in, uh, or um, information on a particular patient, um, what what uh, medications they're on, what are their lab results, what are their X-rays, and like that. And even doctors have this on their phone, so they can. Um, look up the patient on their phone, they can put information on that. It's also be, the data is also usable as in we can uh, compare standards that, um, across national standards so we can put information such as the number of MRSAs and that were, uh, have, that were occurred in, uh, are acquired in the hospital and compare them to other standards uh, across Ireland and uh, Europe. Um, by having all this data on one system in an electronic health record, it helps clinicians make better informed clinical decisions. So you can imagine as a doctor you want as much information as possible on your patient so you can make the right decision. By having all the information on one system, the doctor can have that all there in front of them and they can look up what they require. Um, and my job really is to ensure that all the data that we produce in the laboratory is accurate, complete, and uh, correct, interpretable, and, and that the doctors are able to interpret it in a correct way and uh, that they're able to make better informed decisions. So this is just a, a, an idea of what our information system is in a diagram. Uh, the, the laboratory system is in yellow there because that's the one I'm in charge of. But uh, you've got pharmacy, you've got registration, you've got doctor, you've got uh, radiology. Uh, there's billing because we're a private hospital and there's nursing as well. Uh, so uh, when a doctor or when a patient comes in to hospital first, if you think about all the steps that a patient goes through, first of all they're registered, they're asked a few questions, were you ever in hospital before? They're given them. Um, uh, or, an, or an identifier, an MR number, it's a medical record number that stays with that patient. And they're asked other questions such as maybe do, have you ever given birth, have you um, any known uh, conditions that you're aware of, and uh, stuff like that. And that's all recorded in the system, so that's available straight away then for a doctor to look up when the doctor meets that patient for the first time. The doctor then can dictate um, information onto the make, uh, on that patient and uh, notes through their phone. So they can actually talk into their phone, record notes and that goes into their record. Um, any x-rays, uh, CT scans, anything like that, that's also recorded on the system so they can look it up uh, on, on the, each patient. Um, any nursing notes, any nursing documentation um, that they record, any nutritional um, information that's, that, that's needed to be recorded, all that is recorded in one system. Um, just to give you uh, an idea of how important and um, how I do it, so we have all this data on the computer system but it's important that it's accurate and correct, but it's also what we use, how we use that data to help uh, clinicians make better informed decisions. So we, we, give them, uh, we give them the information in a way where they can interpret it better. Um, so for example, this is just a snapshot. This is all uh, test information, by the way. It's nothing, you're not looking at any patient in particular results. Um, you all know my date of birth now after this. But, um, <laughs> uh, so this is just an example of how the results present to uh, medical scientists, first of all, in the lab. And you can see here, these are, I don't know if you can see, the, there's colours here, but the potassium there, the K is, um, is in red there, it's 6.5, it's high. Um, so that's to alert the medical scientists, first of all, that that's a, a critical result, that that needs to be alerted to the doctor. And that also goes across the doctor system, the doctor views it in the same way. Um, so that's an alert straight away. It seems simple just to have colours, but a lot of information systems don't have that. They, they're in black and white, some of them. They're, they're, they're very old systems. Um, so that pops up and you know straight away then that that's an urgent result, you need to take another look at it and I need to phone a doctor maybe about that result. But just in case you forget to phone it or you haven't been aware of it and you're just clicking through, which can happen in some hospitals and you're, just, you're doing so much stuff you don't have time to be taking a close look at all the results, that they, we have a pop-up box. So you can't actually leave that specimen without actually entering in something into this pop-up box that tells you that you have to phone it. It uh, records the time, who you phone it to, and if uh, reback is received. So there's no way, and if you don't feel that you, you have to fit in something in there, or you can't go, uh, go forward. And also, just in case that doesn't get the message to the doctor, we also send a text message to the doctor. So this is um, just a text message that's been sent to my phone, and it just on the, on the uh, message that just sends the identifier of the patient, and it says the potassium is at 7.0, and it's and gives it the, the reference here. The doctor then can take out his phone, he can pull up the record on his phone, and he can view the patient's detail, or if he needs to be anything, uh, any action taken. Um, another area where we provide information, um, and use the information that we have to make better decisions, get clinically informed decisions, is for example, a CT scan. So in a CT scan, they often um, 
give a contrast, inject a contrast material into a patient um, to, to give for the x-rays so they can have uh, better contrast in it. And when they do that, there's always a risk that if the patient has uh, pre-existing uh, renal problems that um, they may go into renal failure. So they have to carry out a creatinine and an EGFR. Um, if they have had a creatinine and EGFR within the last 24 hours, it automatically pops up there in front of them so they know when they're ordering the CT scan that, that this is the result, is it safe? They're able to assess it if it's safe to proceed or not. Um, another idea for a doctor, we have clinical panels. So a clinical panel is basically where um, if doctor doctor is given so much information in our system, it's very hard for them to like what's relevant, what's not relevant. So in this example, we have a panel, it's a dialysis panel. So if the patient's on dialysis and the doctor, all he wants to know is how he's getting on with his dialysis, is, is he progressing, how, 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 is he, how is his blood's looking. All, he's, all the doctor has to do is click on dialysis and it pops up all the relevant results to the doctor. So they're able to make an assessment straight away and they don't have to go looking through different um, fields and stuff, looking for laboratory results or um, having to go through all this um, information that's presented to them straight away. There's loads of other stuff that I could give you screenshots off and everything, I'll be here all day. Um, for example, uh, if a doctor orders a drug level such as vancomycin and gentamicin, and if they try and give a doctor, um, or give a patient, if a doctor tries to give a patient vancomycin, they're presented with the latest vancomycin level, uh, so they know how, what dose to give the patient, or if it's safe to give the patient the, the vancomycin or not. Um, hemoglobin results appear to, uh, to the doctor before they order um, red blood cells. Um, if they, they're trying to prescribe insulin, the latest glucose results appear to the doctor, uh, so they know whether to give a high dose, a low dose. Um, any drug-to-drug -drug interactions when a doctor is prescribing drugs, if there's a, a chance of it actually interacting with another drug that the patient's already on, um, that's notified to the doctor. Um, any antibiotic resistance, uh, so a patient might be on antibiotics, um, doctor will, a doctor might give a patient antibiotics for an infection, might also take a swab at the same time, it might take two or three days for that, result of that um, swab to come back, and when it comes back, it might turn out that the patient's actually resist, or the organism is actually resistant to that particular antibody that the patient is on. So that's alerted straight away. Once it's resulted by the medical scientist, it's alerted straight away to the doctor. And the other thing we have is the, uh, uh, all the point of care devices, such, uh, such as your glucometers, um, your blood gas analyzers, um, your pregnancy tests um, that they're carried out. They're all uh, interfaced or connected with the uh, computer systems that all the other results populate once they're, once they're done. Um, how has medical science helped me to where I am? Well, academically, you all know it's a really tough course, it's hard to get through. Um, it took me five years to get through it, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not bitter at all, <laughs> But when I did go to do the Masters, um, I actually found it relatively easy compared to it, so I was surprised. Um, but it was, uh, it was actually very good because I, I was well prepared in doing assignments, handing up reports. Um, so when it came to doing two days um, in college every now and again and handing up a few assignments for a Masters, it actually came very easy to me. Um, even stuff like referencing and stuff like that, stuff that I, I learned throughout college. You'll use it if you ever go back to college after this course, if you ever want to do something else. It is, um, it is very useful to have it. You, you get a lot of it in medical science, so it's, uh, you do know it inside out when you, once you leave. Um, three skills that I just thought of that you have to have as a medical scientist and that you learn throughout the course here. You have to be a quick learner, you have to have good attention to detail, and you have to really analyse situations and, uh, such as results or even uh, processes and workflows. And you, they're, apply, they're applicable to any job that you actually go into. Um, every employer wants to look for you to be a quick learner. He doesn't want you to be sitting there beside you, holding your hand while you're doing stuff. When I walked into the job in the Galway Clinic, um, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I bluffed my way into it. I had to learn it all myself. And I just did it. Uh, I, I picked it up quickly. I was able to mess around with stuff and figure it out myself. Uh, attention to detail. I use it every day now. Um, like, we're troubleshooting, uh, like we do deal with a lot of IT issues and, um, and troubleshooting stuff and uh, even when I'm analysing workflows and which details are important, which aren't important, it's very important that it falls into an, an analysis of situations as well. Um, so advice to my students have, pass your assignments, <laughs> uh, hand, up your, hand up your lab reports and you won't end up doing five years and uh, do your exams. And look, look at that, I can't really give any more advice as a student. Um, but when you leave 
medical science, that's when I suppose your real decisions um, have to be made. And, um, <coughs> medical science as a course, when you leave it as a medical scientist, you're not confined to the lab. Don't think of it just sitting in the lab, pushing buttons on an analyzer or swabbing out plates. Or, like, there's more to it. You, you can use medical science. Uh, like I'm working in, a, in, a, in an office now, and I, I'm in and out of the lab all the time because of over the lab system, but I, I'm not sitting down uh, plating off stuff and stuff that I was doing my head in when I was working in the biochemistry. So don't think that you have to work in a, in a laboratory setting because that's, that's not the case. There are other options out there. Don't be afraid to go out there. I did a master's in health informatics. There's loads of masters out there that you can do once you leave. Don't think that you have to do a master's in medical science because uh, there's loads of other masters that will take you. You have a science degree, uh, so you, you, other, other courses or other masters will take you. Uh, so don't be afraid to try something new. Like, I, I could be back here in a few years talking about something other job that I'm in because I might just decide to do something else. So just don't be afraid to um, try something new if, you, if, if it's not for you. If it is, um, fair enough, but it wasn't for me and I went in a total different path. Um, so it is doable. And um, that's all I have. Thanks for having me. I didn't really, no, I wouldn't have thought of, I'm not a computer geek or anything like that, um, I wouldn't, and I don't do really programming or anything like that, that's not really what I do, I analyse workflows and I see how can I get the computer system to help you with your workflow so that we record as much data as we possibly can um, and make the workflow more efficient than we have. Basically, the main goal of all this is to, for the patient, if we have all this information on a computer system, it's always usable by clinicians and to make better decisions for the patient. Um, I didn't know, I, I picked the masters uh, because I was interested, I, got, I, I wanted to get out of uh, medical science and go into some, another area. Um, it just has so happened it was I, I, IT. I was looking for something else, um, but uh, it's, I'm not, yeah, you don't deal, like I'm dealing with computer systems but I'm not really on a computer all day, so it's not really um, that techy as such. There is there's a national laboratory information system being introduced across um, all public hospitals at the minute. So there is going to be jobs being created for laboratory analysts and stuff within uh, healthcare over the next while. Um, the system that they're introducing, they plan to have it uh, connected with all hospitals. So if you want to look up blood results on a patient that when they were in uh, Cork in you know, a hospital last week, you can do that. Um, that's been introduced, it's starting to roll out. It's supposed to be this month um, in St. Uh, James's, but uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure if it's going ahead or I haven't heard. Um, we're that's well advanced in terms of that's IT. That's just a laboratory yeah. system yeah. though, isn't that's it? That's just a laboratory system. That there isn't a central hospital system like what you're no. talking about there. This, this is an EHR, electronic health record, but the only, um, with the most advanced hospital in Ireland with this system. I think the aim with the HSE is to actually to, to get to that level, but at the moment they're, they're, they're very far away from it. Yeah. Well, so we're seeing um, the, the difference between when you go on placement or when you, you know, for those of you that have been on placement, it's the public versus private and the resources are the big issue there. Can I just ask you a question though? I mean, you mentioned. Did you have to change any of your analyzers? I mean, was everything already interfaced, or was the system that you had just upgraded to feed in, or were there issues there? For the that? connections of all the point of care stuff. Yeah. yeah, so the system can actually receive messages from all the devices. It's designed that way, that's what it's there for. It's the hospital information system. Uh, there wasn't m many issues. What you have to do is you have to contact the person providing the device and contact your computer system, which is Meditech. And between that, then we come up with a, a messaging system, and then the messages are flowing. Um, it's How long does the system go down? Um, the, the, the computer system as a whole doesn't. We have uh, scheduled downtime, but it's never gone down while we've been there. 
um, there's servers the, the, the servers the servers are actually on site they're not external so we have control over that as well so it's actually it's very uh, sound um, structurally um, so the, we haven't actually ever had any unscheduled uh, downtime and when there is scheduled time downtime or when there's unscheduled downtime there's always downtime procedures in place in the hospital so a computer system should not stop you if it goes down it should not stop you from carrying out your job and it's only there to assist you. Um, so it's there to assist you, retain information, but it should never stop someone from carrying out their job. So there should always be a, a way of doing your job without actually using the computer system. Okay. Yeah. Sure, I have, um, it's a common to all of them question. Yeah. I think it's interesting to hear you said once or twice, um, and just for everyone, again, on this, I've heard you say, I want to get out of medical science. I want to, to leave medical science. <laughs> Listening to you up there this evening, the way you can talk, about results on tests. You, you're you still in medical science, so you need to Yeah, but I suppose when I say that. No, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. You're <laughs> in <into> it. No, <laughs> 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 it's I know, yeah. It's flowing, different test results, analysis. You're not to IT. But someone with an IT degree would not be as good of a job you're doing. You know the background. All the yeah, and that's true, and it has a big time in, in my job. I, w I wouldn't have the position <coughs> now that I'm in, because I had no previous experience in IT or anything like that. I was, I was just starting a master's of, um, and when I went for the job, and I just chanced my arm, really, I said, sure, I'll have a go and see if I get it. Um, but it was my lab experience. I knew all the tests. I knew the processes. And even it helps me big time when I'm talking to someone in the lab trying to come up with a uh, workflow. Like, um, they're able to tell me stuff, and I understand what they're talking about. They're not trying to I speak about yeah, those. Yeah, it's an important point. Yeah. It's the routine testing. <laughs> 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 and I suppose that, when, I, when I say I was trying to get out of medical science, I wasn't trying to get out of medical science yeah. as such. I was trying to just get out of the routine. Yeah, yeah, the routine yeah. lab, yeah. And I think that, I mean, that was something we would always say, I would say to, to students that I would meet at open day, so I might have met some of you, is that it's a fantastic foundation yeah. degree. It, it has the added bonus of allowing you to be a medical scientist if that's what you want, yeah. but you have a fantastic <coughs> foundation to go on into other roles as well, yeah. So, did you question? Yeah, just a foundation question, you know, results from doctors and their phones and things. Yeah. I mean, that would be my university of Does any, any issue in terms of, like, that affection thing, you know, results yeah. from their own doctors and no, um, the the way we it's, it gets through the data protection laws and stuff like that is um, it, when the text message we send the text message we send the identifier which is a hospital identifier for that patient. Um, so we send the hospital identifier and we send the res test and the result. Um, there is no way of identifying what patient or there's no way of a random or picking up that uh, phone and seeing them. That test that was that text message. I may have to say, oh, that's Jared Holler down the road. He's he's a potassium here. There's no way of I saying that. Really. You have to have access to compute the computer system and to, the, to actually be able to uh, identify the patient. Uh, so that's why it's it's allowed. And um, there's no way of identifying who it is um, unless you have access. And if in order to have access to the computer system, you have to have a log on and a password and uh, it's security that way. The doctors actually like the system. Yeah. The which they could. The, the fact that they're getting text messages while they're on the golf It's an opt-in opt-out. We've actually had them get text messages out on holidays in Spain and everything like that. You know, they do ask to get turned off at times. Uh, it's an opt-in opt-out um, option. So a lot of the doctors do opt into it because they they actually like getting the text messages. They, they're they're real time and they know when something's happened to the patient. Um, there is some doctors that don't. So the likes of the oncology doctors that will be dealing with them, they don't like it, mainly because every result, if you're an oncology patient, is going to be out of range, so you're going to be getting loads of text messages. It's more the other uh, general uh, clinicians that actually use it and uh, they do like it, yeah. 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 There, there's an on-call system where it's, so I'm over the lab system but then there's someone over the nursing system doctor system so there's a team I think the team's up at 17 at the minute because we're putting in a new system that's going to allow us to do more things other than just uh, what I showed you there today um, so we do, we do an on-call system where it's, it's a week on but it's standby on-call you have a phone 
uh, week on, week off. So there is, yeah, there's a call system. But if the system did go down, uh, everyone would be in because it would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, is that it? So we're happy to move on. So. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs>